All right, so now that we've talked about Crohn's and a little bit about how we perform enterography and the anatomy, we get to talk about the pathology in Crohn's and what we typically see for these patients. And so here's a pretty classic, typical case of active Crohn's disease and what we see. And so when we approach these cases, I'm going to give you a quick overview about how I talk about it. And then uh, we'll talk in depth about all the individual findings and how to discuss those findings, what's important to talk about and how much detail that I go into and how much detail the experts recommend people put into reports. And so here's a case of Crohn's with an active terminal ileal and cecal disease. And what you see on each sequence is different. So for our T2 sequence, what we see is that the walls thicken. We see there's some edema that we want to verify with our fat saturated sequences just to make sure it's not fat, but it does look brighter than the adjacent muscle. So we're, we're thinking that's edema. And um, we also see that there's some abnormal signal in the, in the fat surrounding. This is a fat sided sequence. The fat saturation isn't great peripherally, but it's pretty good in the abdomen. So I think this, this works and you can see that is true edema. The true FISP isn't as critical in this case because we have good quality T2 images, but we see the same findings on our true FISP or steady state pre procession sequence. On the pre-contrast, we can kind of get a sense that that wall is thickened, but then as we move to the post-contrast, it really jumps out at us that this, this is an abnormal segment of bowel. So we see a lot of inflammation extending up into the ascending colon, down through the TI into that distal ileum. And so that hyper-enhancement on the early phase tells us that this looks to be pretty active inflammatory changes. When we look at our Axial sequences, we see the same, same finding. Again, we want to compare that to the adjacent ball and see that it is clearly hyper-enhancing inflammatory change. And so that's the general findings that we see that make up the classic hallmarks of identifying Crohn's disease. But once we've identified the disease, we do want to talk in pretty good detail about the different findings because each finding that we see can have different implications for whether it's a chronic disease, and can have implications for how severe the disease is and what kind of management is needed. So for the next piece, we're going to talk individually about the different types of findings, how to talk about them, and what to be looking for when we do that.